I'm absolutely blown away by how Luke's character and really the cast as a whole has really been presented in a show that, even though I've been enjoying since the start, I was expecting a few things that would kind of follow the general tropes that I've come to expect with a pretty powerful male main character and a hefty cast of potential romances and I've always enjoyed how Luke recognizes how the characters feel but I really wasn't expecting him by episode 8 to also have some form of romantic feelings and those being on Dia's kind of side but it makes a lot of sense when you give the idea that he was raised as a tool in his original life, was disposed of and killed, and now recognizes that what his father's saying is true, that most likely he could suffer the exact same fate here, and the idea of living a peaceful life as a merchant probably is the normal best route to go down. But because he was raised by a father who, yes, was an assassin and was training him to be able to kill without mercy need be, he also taught him to be a person with his own desires all at the same time. So a father saying, I would actually prefer you go down this path because unlike me, it's not too late for you. Everyone you've killed have already been on death's doorstep, so it's not like you are doing anything that is irredeemable. You essentially took the spot of the executioner. But the fact that because it was very clear last week, but I like how they already acknowledged it, the fact that he always made it apparent that every month he would visit Dia, the person who was kind of like his first real connection that kind of taught him everything in this world that would really matter in terms of magical prowess and everything like that. The fact that he really just wants to marry her someday and a merchant wouldn't be able to marry someone of that high class, but if he sticks to his family line, he can do that. And the idea of, you know, recognizing that he could be betrayed someday, even if he makes the perfect assassination, should something get spilled, you know, the people who know of this chain will dispose of you. And the fact that he's leaving the merchant lifestyle as a backup plan, that he's not going to let himself get blown apart in a plane, but in this world it'd be an assassination in his sleep. He's smart while also feeling things. And I think that's really important because, I mean, as much as I think we still could have an anime core, maybe even a couple of course, dedicated to his assassinations in his original life. The thing that makes Luke as a character so great is the fact that he does feel like a person with feelings. He recognizes that characters like Maha, I mean, as much as she does love him, there is more of like a prince kind of royalty there, that it was the knight in shining armor. The fact that she actually recognizes that she pretty much was kind of being used for her mana, but then ultimately after a series of doubts has finally come to accept that, you know, this person is her prince first and foremost, and, you know, she would do anything for him. And the idea that you have, you know, Tart, who also has her own feelings, but the thing for someone like Luke, as much as he cares for all these people, and the fact that he wants to continue to fight for people in this country, because it's not really about being a hero per se, but more so keeping those that he cares about, this very close-knit group, alive and safe and secure. But he also has his own personal desires, and the fact that his father kind of laughs and, you know, I never thought you'd be that stupid, but the fact that he's kind of proud of him, the fact that he's not following in the chain of command just because he has to, but because he wants to for his own reasons, it's really nice to see that type of development. I really don't know if I can compare something quite like this, because there's so many shows, even though they're not necessarily assassin shows per se, but there's so many different times where you have something like kind of forced on your protagonist and, you know, they have opportunities to leave, but then they choose not to. But just the way they did it in this episode, especially with kind of like seriously seeing the merchant life. And honestly, it would be interesting because like had he actually accepted that, I mean, imagine the god is like looking in, seeing another person just simply like not going down the assassin lifestyle, but just becoming a merchant. But the reason he declined it, it just makes so much sense, right? Really, Luke is a character. I've really enjoyed how like especially with like last week with the wet dream, like there was a reason for him to get flustered there. But the fact that he's being so confident in what he wants and clearly D and him have a really great relationship. I mean, there's clearly chemistry there. It'll be interesting, right? I mean, seemingly we're back on the assassination lifestyle. He mentions in this episode with the number of monsters going to villages, the hero should pop up eventually. And I mean, in this episode, he even mentions how he's not going to be stupid and he's not going to get betrayed and he's not going to blindly trust. He's not going to blindly trust the organization and he's not going to blindly trust the goddess. He's going to do things that work for him and ultimately that's what matters. I know there's been a lot of like topic of who will be the hero and this and that and if it is someone he's already met I mean definitely the goddess's plans are going to be very interesting to watch because even though she said he doesn't have to kill 
It's also very, you never want to trust the goddess in anime. There's always a hidden agenda, I find. Or if you just blindly trust them, you generally have a pretty shitty main character who doesn't know what to think for himself. And everything we've seen with Luke, right? I mean, it's very clear he's going to do what he thinks is beneficial for his family and his connections, but he has no trouble taking life to keep them safe, which is what makes him very different than your typical hero protagonist who wants to keep the peace. But this man will have no problem slitting necks in the middle of the night, which is what makes it so compelling. Though I did like the kind of parting scenes and the idea that Maha, as an example, we get more backstory with what led her to be homeless and poor, the fact that someone who was close to the family ended up betraying, taking over the company, and the fact that Luke already did his homework and knew everything like that, and that he tells her, like, you know, I completely trust you, you can put personal opinions in this, you know, just clearly don't make a mistake and do things right. The fact that she's being left in charge of kind of the trading company, it's really nice to see that even when Luke is being Luke, his merchant lifestyle is still secure. And I think that's important because, you know, probably he'd want to have a few different appearances just in case, you know, one gets blown and he has to go to another because should the organization ever not want him anymore, we don't want a situation like the plane again. We want him to be able to go adjust to a new lifestyle. And seemingly this man has prepared for the worst and he knows what he wants and he's going to take action into his own hands. I'm still glad the family's around. I truly thought the family would die by the first handful of episodes. We've seen enough anime with good anime parents who you actually like seeing and they end up getting killed so quickly. But the fact that we came in in episode 8 like two years after the whole merchant kind of fiasco and they're still around. I mean, it's just nice to see you have like a very loving mother. You have a stern but caring father and just everything about it just you understand why Luke's persona has changed since his adult life in the original world but still stays true to the assassin characteristics. I mean this show's great. It's definitely one of the biggest surprises this season I think hands down. Sure you definitely get some weird CGI with the horse cart and you know the man sitting there and yeah, that's not the greatest thing to look at, but given how many times that carriage has been used in the past handful of episodes, I understand why they're using a 3D model there, but I did like the little bit of action we did have in this episode. The fact that it wasn't on Luke Batart and just seeing how, like, she, like, destroyed those wolves. Like, she really has grown into a violent killer, which is no surprise given the number of missions that he was sending her on, and she'd come back with buttons to show how many times she kicked some ass and, uh, took some life there, but still, just... Great show. It's full of personality. It's full of believable reasons why characters are acting in certain ways. And while I definitely didn't think the father would be okay with Luke leaving the assassin lifestyle, it makes a lot of sense given that, you know, a son of his is to be expected to be the heir. But at the same time, he generally cares for Luke. So giving him a way out, the fact that the merchant lifestyle was first and foremost to give him a second identity, but that chance should he pursue it. It's really great to see how much the family really matters in this show, and it's not just a disposable filler bullshit like you typically see. But let me know your thoughts and feelings on the World's Finest Assassin Episode 8 down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.